Good morning, Mets fans, and welcome to a Thursday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and after last night's West Coast game, <laughs> at least it seemed that way, uh, and another fantastic performance from Zach Wheeler, the Mets improved to 12 games under 500. Um, kind of going back and forth with that record there, but I want to talk about last night's game. I want to talk about the offensive explosion. Uh, and, of course, the continued lack of offensive explosion for one Jacob deGrom, who just has to be chuckling in the dugout as he watches stuff like last night happen. But I want to talk about Wheeler's performance um, and uh, touch on those things today ahead of the newly rescheduled doubleheader. Last night's, uh, last night's game was an odd one. Yesterday was just a weird day. Um, with the weather, uh, the the forecast being what it was, um, they they were of course, as we know, set to play a doubleheader yesterday, with the first game starting at 4:10 and the second game starting about 20 minutes after that was over. We were probably thinking like around 8 o'clock, maybe the second game would start. Uh, as it turned out, of course, the first game didn't start till after 9 o'clock. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, there was that, or, or till just about nine o'clock at least. So, uh, no two no two games yesterday. Although in a very Mets fashion, they didn't even really announce that till like the midpoint of the game. Like, oh yeah, by the way, um, there's not going to be a doubleheader today after all. And we're like, no shit, it'll be five o'clock in the morning before you finish both games. But, um, in any event, uh, the game did get played, at least one of them, and uh, Zach Wheeler was once again masterful. Uh, eight innings of shutout baseball, um, four hits, escaped a uh, bases loaded jam. Uh, don't think he had, I think he had six strikeouts through his eight innings, maybe seven, um, which is great. And, you know, Keith and Gary kept pointing out the fact that he was using his curveball more last night. It just, it looks like, again, and I've said this a number of times, he's becoming a pitcher. He's not relying on the strikeout as much. He's pitching to contact more. Um, you know, through eight innings last night and through the extended uh, sixth inning where uh, Thomas Nito couldn't grab a fly ball, uh, a little pop out, a little pop fly behind home plate, um, and the inning was extended and Wheeler had to throw more pitches, even with that, he was at like 87 pitches or 88 pitches through eight innings. Um, Gelbsey called it on the broadcast last night. He was going to be going for a Maddox, you know, a complete game with under 100 pitches. That was, a, of course, as we know, a Greg Maddox uh, specialty. Um, and then, of course, they mentioned the fact that the last Met to do that was John Main in 2005, I think they said, which is nuts, but whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, Wheeler didn't end up getting the complete game, and I was irrationally angry um, at that last night. Um... He, uh, Wheeler, I should say, um, came out of the game after eight innings, and I was just completely stunned. I was pissed because I was tired. I didn't really want to be up watching the game. I mean, I love, of course, watching the Mets, but I would have much rather been sleeping. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, he doesn't come out for the ninth inning, and I'm just like, what the hell? Like, there's 12 people in the crowd. They give them something to reward them with, some, with, with their uh, or for their loyalty. Uh, there's people watching and staying up at home to watch this game at, uh, at a chance at a complete game. It would have been the third complete game of the season uh, for the Mets, and then it doesn't happen. Well, as it turns out, after the game, we find out, and then I kind of felt bad for being mad about it. But find out that Wheeler was exhausted. Um, you know, he was sort of saying, look, we've been here for 12 hours, and um, I'm, I'm tired. I just I couldn't do it. So uh, it, was, it was probably a smart move with that in mind and knowing that. And it's proof, again, that when we on Twitter get angry about something and just immediately, like, angry tweet about it, we probably don't have all the details. It's why the Peter Alonzo situation is is laughable to me. Um, it's why the David Wright, uh, and I'm talking about the Twitter reactions to these situations. It's why the David Wright stuff just doesn't, you know, I, I don't, we, we don't know the whole story. And we're commenting on what we think we can see and what we think we know publicly and you know, we just don't know. So, um, that being said, I'm glad to see that Wheeler pitched eight fantastic innings, uh, extending his phenomenal stretch this year, proving, I think, that he's out of out of the, the past mold of Wheeler and into this new pitcher mold that I think we're going to have going forward, which will be awesome. Um, 
on the offensive side of the game last night, uh, of course, since Jacob deGrom was not pitching, the Mets hit the ball out of the ballpark and drove in a shit ton of runs. Um, Jay Bruce hit a grand slam. Dom Smith hit a home run. Jose Reyes hit a blast. Um, it, it was it was uh, it was a typical game after Degrom start um, because they scored runs and it's it's clearer and clearer every time I see it and I said it yesterday they are pressing when Degrom is on the mound they are pressing like crazy when Degrom is on the mound but what are you gonna do uh, again I think all Jake can do is sit and dug out and chuckle about it and laugh um, Jeff McNeil I'll point out Mr. McNeil uh, becoming my favorite Met. Uh, three more hits last night. The dude is a freaking hitting machine. Um, he, he, every time I see him, he reminds me more and more of Daniel Murphy. But has he has a glove, uh, whereby, whereby Murphy had like two bricks on his hands. Uh, so I'm, I'm really, really liking Je Jeff McNeil and what, what we see out of Jeff McNeil. Um, today, uh, Mets are going to be playing a doubleheader, allegedly. We'll see what happens. 310 first game, uh, second game will start after that. Left, uh, it is a sin to lefty something. Steven Matz, uh, Steven Matz and Jason Vargas uh, on the mound for the Mets today. Uh, I'm not sure which order they'll be pitching in, but um, we'll just hope that we can see the, the pitching staff continue to do what both the Grom and Wheeler did uh, in the last two games against the lowly Miami Marlins. Finally, one other thing to look forward to today is the David Wright announcement. Uh, it came out last night that before uh, the game today, David Wright was going to be, uh, they would be having a press conference to discuss David Wright's future and the next steps in his uh, pr proposed return to the game. So that is this afternoon as well. I'm very much looking forward to seeing what that turns out to be. I hope it is the right decision for all parties involved, and I pray that the Wilpons aren't cheaping out and that they have another reason other than collecting insurance money that they're not reinvesting in the team to not put the captain on the field. Okay, so that's what's going on today. Um, tomorrow the Mets uh, play in Boston, where I will be this weekend with the Seven Lion Army. Uh, was really hoping to see DeGrom pitch on Saturday, but Mother Nature had other ideas. That's okay. Um, so we'll be uh, we'll be at Fenway to see the Mets take on the best team in the world. That would be the Boston Red Sox. First team to 100 wins this year, the Boston Red Sox. Um, it'll be fun. It'll be fun to be at Fenway. I'm looking forward to it. Um, and as a result of my trip there, I'm going to be I'm not going to be in the office tomorrow. So I will more than likely not have another video until Monday after the Mets get swept by the Red Sox. <laughs> I'm kidding, although it's probably going to be true. Uh, but I'll be back on Monday to recap um, recap the weekend set with, uh, with Boston and talk about the seven-line outing and uh, go from there. And we'll also have some sort of reaction to the David Wright news, I guess. So until then, I thank you for watching. I appreciate it, as I always do. Follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Met. And as always, let's go Mets.